Hello and welcome to this video. In this video you will learn how the box Muller method works. This is a method of generating normal random variables. Um, I will start by explaining the theory behind this method and explain why it works. And then I will um, show you that it actually works through an implementation in Python. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Um, so, have fun! Okay, so the goal of this video is to teach you how to. So, the goal is to simulate x, which is a standard normal, using a standard uniform and a standard exponential. Um, yeah, let me just write that out. So the u is uniform 0, 1, and e is exponential with rate 1. Okay, the idea is to use polar coordinates. So if we consider two um, standard normals x1, x2, they are independent, normal 0, 1. Then we can consider a coordinate system where we put x1 out this axis and x2 out this axis. Then if x1 is here and x2 is here, for example, then this point will be x1 point x2. This is using regular coordinates but we can write this in another way. We can write this as r multiplied by a vector of cosine of theta and sine of theta, where r is the radius going out here and the theta is the, the angle between the x-axis and our um, radius. So this is the whole idea, but it is far from clear yet how to do this. So hopefully I can um, I can show you how to do this. So first of all, let's consider f x one of x. This is the density of x x one, which is a standard normal. So this will be one over square root two pi then multiplied by the standard error, but that is the standard deviation, which is one, then multiplied by e to the power of minus one half times x minus the mean squared. So that's just x squared, then divided by the variance, but that is just one, so that disappears. Then since we know x1 and x2 are independent, we can consider f x1 x2 taken in x1 point x2 this will be the product f x1 x1 times f x2 this is because they are independent x2 so this will be equal to 1 over 2 pi since there will be two of these factors multiplied by each other and then e minus one half times x1 squared plus x2 squared. Okay, this is the joint density. But now we wish to make some kind of transformation. So we want to consider x1, x2 equal to cosine of theta sine of theta. And instead of an equality, I will write an arrow and we have some function taking us over here. Um, so I want to find the density of this side instead of this. So we know the density of the left side and then we take some function so we can find the Jacobian matrix or the determinant of the Jacobian matrix 
we can consider this as a matrix where we uh, where we like this function takes x1 into r cosine theta and x2 over into r sine theta so here we um, take the derivative with regards to theta here we take the derivative with regards to r of our first function r cosine theta r cosine theta and then over here we take the derivatives again uh, with regards to r of r sine theta r sine theta so this is the matrix we wish to take the derivative of a two by two matrix and if we actually do these um, differentiations then we can consider um, minus sine theta uh, let me just put the r in front minus r sine theta is this over here we will get um, r cosine theta down here we will get cosine theta and over here we will get sine theta okay so far so good now we take the determinant so we multiply this entrance with this one and subtract this entrance with this one okay and then we take the um, absolute value so we take the absolute value of minus r sine theta squared minus r cosine squared theta um, okay but if we take the absolute value of this and we put r outside then we just get r multiplied by cosine theta squared plus sine squared theta but it is a well-known result i don't want to waste time showing it here it's a bit uh, far away from this subject but this is equal to one so the jacobian is equal to r and now why was we why were we looking at this jacobian well it was because we knew this density up here and we wanted to find the density of the right side now we found the jacobian we can consider um, we can consider the density of theta point r of some observations um, yeah let me write this in another way and it may be as a bit weird to change the notation but i'll do it nevertheless so we have this function one over two pi um, e minus one half x1 squared plus x2 squared and then we multiply it by the determinant of the jacobian and this will be the new density but first of all i remark that um, that up here this if we have a coordinate then the r we know that r squared is equal to the coordinates squared and then the sum um, that once again is a bit far away from this topic so this is equal to 1 over 2 pi and then we can make, really emphasize that we multiply this with e minus 1 half 
r squared multiplied by this determinant of the Jacobian, which was r. So here we have something which uh, describes our theta. I know there is no theta in here, but it's just a constant density. And over here we have a density containing r. And since we can split, like this was the the uh, the simultaneous density of theta and r, so we can split this into a product. This means that theta is independent of r, which is quite nice for us. Furthermore, this is the density of theta being uniform in the interval 0 to 2 pi because the density of such a random variable is simply 1 divided by the length of the interval which in this case must then be 2 pi um, and now we are almost done now I need like this is a main result. Now I want to find the density, no, the distribution of R. So I want to find the distribution of R. So to this end, I, I claim that R has the same distribution as the square root of 2 multiplied by a standard exponential. So e1 is exponential, whoops, exponential with <laughs> exponential with rate 1. Okay, now um, to prove this, I consider. The probability of the probability of the square root of two e one to be less than or equal to some r. This is equal to the probability. So I can um, take the square on both sides, and then I can divide two to the other side. So this is the probability of e one being less than or equal to r squared over two. This is a exponential uh, random variable, so this is just the CDF taken in r squared over 2. So this is equal to 1 minus the exponential of minus the rate, which is 1, times this value. So r squared over 2. Now I notice. So this is like this is the CDF CDF of square root two e one taken in R. Now to find the the density, I wish to show that the density of this random variable is equal to the density of this one. So to find the density, I consider. the uh, derivative of the CDF. This must be the density of 2e1 taken in R. But if I take the derivative, like this one disappears, and we get this down, and the minuses cancel each other out. So this will be e minus e r squared over 2 multiplied by uh, this up here, the derivative of this up here. So minus then r squared derivative, that's just 2 times r, so 2r divided by 2. But the 2s cancel out, so this is, um, and the minuses cancel out, so this is e minus r squared over 2 multiplied by r and 
up here? Well, that is exactly the density of our R. Um, up here, I just used a large R instead of a small R. So R has the same distribution as two times a standard exponential. So now we're actually done. Now, uh, now we can simulate because we know that x1, x2, we can, we can easily write this using the polar coordinates instead. So cosine of theta, sine of theta multiplied by r. And um, this has the same distribution as the cosine of theta, sine of theta multiplied by square root of 2 times a standard exponential. And we also know that these thetas are standard, uh, no, not standard uniform, but are uniform 0 to 2 pi. So to simulate x from a standard normal, we can um, observe, oh, we can uh, simulate theta and r, and we know their distributions. Um, and then we simply put z, no, sorry, x equal to cosine of theta multiplied by, uh, let's instead write e1, multiplied by square root of 2 e1. Notice that I only use the cosine, cosine now because I just want a single point. I could simulate two points at a time if I took both the cosine and the sine of this theta, but I just want one coordinate. Okay, now as a last remark to simulate x from any normal distribution with variance mu and no, with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then we simply simulate uh, let's call this y instead. We simulate a standard normal and we set y equal to mu plus x times sigma. So not sigma squared, but just the standard deviation. And then this will be normal with this. Uh, these parameters. This is um, this. This can be showed using the the linearity of the mean and the um, the linearity of the mean and the well, not linearity, but um, properties of the mean and the variance of random variables. And this is it for the handwritten part. I will end the video with a simulation in Python uh, where you can see that this actually works in practice, even though it might be a bit abstract. And let me just go all the way out here so you can see everything at once in case you want to do that. Um, it has become a bit messy, but that is it for now. Okay, now I wish to simulate 
or build a function which can simulate these standard normals. So first of all, I have prepared some code here. I need to import some packages. Uh, the use of these packages will hopefully be clear as I go through the code. Um, then I have built a function here, which takes a theta and an e, and then it builds our uh, standard normals x1 and x2 from the handwritten notes um, using these. So this is a helper function. Now I can define a function called boxmuller, which takes n as an input where n is the number of simulations we wish to create. Then I set out equal to an empty list and for i in the range up to n, I then, um, oops, in here, I then simulate a theta, which is uniform 0 to 2 pi, and an exponential, which is, uh, which has a scale 1 divided by 1. Now, using the random package from NumPy, exponentials are defined from the scale. I usually work uh, with exponentials defined from the rate. But just be aware that the scale is equal to the to one divided by the rate. So that's why I write one divided by one. In this case, it would be the same, but if you have scale equal to two, you have rate equal to a half. So be aware of that. Um, now I wish to use my helper function to build my x. But I run into a problem here because, well, this outputs two variables. So as I mentioned in the handwritten notes, I'll just focus on the cosine. Um, and then I append this x to my out uh, list. And then finally, I return out. Now, this should work. And to check that it actually works, I have prepared some more code. If I can take this, yeah, um, like that. So I start by building a figure. Then I can see I forgot something here. Then I'll create 10,000 simulations. I'll build a histogram of these simulations. And finally, I will use these two lines to add the density curve of a of a um, standard uniform. So if I try to run this code, um, I think there's some problem with my PyCharm just uh, I'll return in a moment. Okay, um, I'm back again. I have changed a tiny bit of my code. Instead of using a list, I use an NPy, NumPy array. So I create, initialize a array of zeros, and then I just add the entrances while I go through this loop. Um, so now I hope that everything works. Um, and as we can see, we end up with a plot. Let me just put it to full screen, which is, uh, to me at least looks like the histogram and the uh, density curve fits quite well with each other. Now there's one less, last thing to do, because this just gives us standard normals. What if we wanted to simulate from um, from any normal distribution. Well, then instead of just adding x, we would simply add this, mu plus x times sigma. Um, and again, I don't want to show why this works. You can 
probably, if you watch this video, you probably have had some basic probability theory, then you could probably show this yourself. But now if I, instead of just this x, take, let's say, mu equal to 5, sigma equal to 2, then I will have to, let's make these from 0 to 15, minus 3. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, something was wrong there. Oh, of course, I still add the regular uh, normal curve. Instead, I have in here in my snippets, I have defined a phi function. Whoops. Uh, let me just put it up here. So this is the density of a normal distribution with mu and sigma. Uh, you can look at this yourself. I don't want to go through it. I already mentioned it during the handwritten notes. And we want to do this uh, phi of x mu uh, 5.2. Yeah, and that looks a lot better. Now we can see that our mean is around 5. And we have a standard deviation, uh, which looks like it could probably be 2. Uh, it, it fits very well with the curve, at least. Uh, so that was it. This is everything I wanted to show. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. And if you, um, if you like this topic of generating random variables, you could consider watching my RNG playlist, where I have a lot of videos on generating random variables. If you have any questions or maybe some ideas for new videos, please leave a comment down below. Um, any feedback is very welcome. I am just starting out this channel and if you have uh, any ideas for something I could do better or yeah, generally any ideas for this channel, then please share them with me and, and hopefully you'll help me become a better uh, content creator. Um, so thank you very much and I hope to have you as a viewer on a, another video.